let's see here. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Faithful Moments, and I'm your host, Dr. Shimona Wembley, and I am excited to come to you all on this evening to share a little bit about being thankful. So November, we have we know that this is the month of being thankful. And so with Thanksgiving just passing, uh, we're still in a place of gratitude. So tonight's episode is all about a grateful heart, embracing thankfulness and kindness. So I am going to um, go ahead and get started. But for those of you that are joining me for the very first time, again, I'm your host, Dr. Shimona Wembley, and Faithful Moments is a talk show where we bring the Word of God to life. And we actually um, talk about how to activate the Word of Life. And I always say, listen, you know, we read the Bible, we study the Bible, we can, we can quote scripture from memory, um, but sometimes we don't actually activate, activate the word of, life, word of God in our lives so that we can see evidence of what scripture says that we're entitled to. And so, therefore, that is the purpose of Faithful Moments. So, I'm excited to have you. Hello there, hello there. Thank you for joining in on this evening. So today's topic is around being grateful, embracing gratefulness, thoughtfulness, um, being thankful and kind. So I kind of laid out um, a format here that I wanted to follow. And there are a few areas that I want to touch on. And I just did four bullet points. Number one, we're going to talk about the power of gratitude. Number two, how do we incorporate being thankful on a day-to-day -day basis? Number three, ways to express thankfulness to others. And number four, practicing kindness and compassion towards others. And you know, in the midst of talking about that, we're going to share... Um, and if anybody wants to join in, or if you want to put comments in the air, in the um, in the chat, if you want to come in and join in on the conversation, guess what? You're more than welcome. Let's guess what? Hit that button and join me, and let's have a conversation. So uh, we're just gonna just be thankful right now and practice by telling God thank you God thank you for this time of fellowship thank you for this time Father God that we can come before your throne of grace and mercy Father God first of all repenting of our sins both knowingly and unknowingly sins that we may have may have committed Father God knowingly or unknowingly even the sins of our ancestors our mother's side our father's side going back to over a thousand generations Father God we stand in the gap we repent so that the enemy knows that he has no access to our life no legal grounds in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you that you have given us Father God that birthright according to your word Father God you've come into the covenant with us Father God that there that the enemy cannot Father God, um, by any means, touch us, hinder us, Father God, because you died on the cross and you rose again, and therefore all of our sins are forgiven in the mighty name of Jesus. So we thank you, we glorify you in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're going to jump in, the power of gratitude. So I actually um, picked out two scriptures that we're going to kick off our night with talking about the power of gratitude psalms 107 and verse 1 psalms 107 verse 1 and i am reading from the new international version um, of the bible of this that's where i'm taking the scripture from give thanks to the lord for he is good his love endureth forever I know we've heard that multiple times. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. So verse 1. Psalms 107. Um, 
chapter 107, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love, and you know, the other version says, his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Amen. And in, in this um, particular scripture, it talks about the significance of gratitude. We want to begin to shape our perception and our attitude around a posture of being thankful. And I'm going to go over to Thessalonians 5 and 18. Thessalonians 5 and 18. Thessalonians 5 and 18. So tonight is going to be, we're going to do some, some basic teaching. So we don't have a special guest on tonight, but we are going to dive in here. Okay. So, um, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. 5, 18. And it reads, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, y'all know, it probably took us a little minute to be able to embrace that, right? Because when we're going through circumstances, whether it be challenges at work, challenges in our relationship, challenges in our finances, you know, many times, hi, Jessica, Jessica, you're more than welcome to join in with me um, on this conversation. You can join in live if you would like um, so that we can have a dialogue. Anyone feel free to hop right in. So I'm talking about right now the power of gratitude and around that the verse that I just read talks about being grateful in all circumstances you know um, many of you have heard my story where I talk about when my daughter passed away and so like how can you <laughs> in that thought in that mindset you're like um, to be grateful to be thoughtful in you know the loss of a child but I was able to recognize, guess what, God, this was just a gift that you gave me. And in this gift and in um, me giving my daughter back to you, I like to say it that way. Um, guess what? That was a that was a process. And, you know, being able to um, being able to embrace that and not be bitter and angry and to go into a place of de um, depression you know, just standing, okay, God, what, what is this thing? What am I supposed to get out of this? Like, what do you want people to learn from this? What are we supposed to get out of this? What am I supposed to get out of this? And so, you know, God gives us cir circumstances and different things so that we can become a, te a testimony to others. You know, how did we come out? And it was only through the grace of God, leaning and understanding on the power and on God's word that, you know, you're able to even walk through, you know, keeping your mind positive and just being grateful. God, you know, what is it? Uh, what is it that you want me to do? These were times that every trial that is set up in our life is designed to build us for the assignment that God has given us. So. Although it was a negative as it seemed to me and, you know, to many others where we lose our relatives, our loved ones, guess what? We still walk in a posture of gratitude. God, I thank you. I thank you, God, for whatever you're doing in my life. I thank you, God, for this situation, for this circumstance, although it may be painful, but there is something that you want to get out of my life. There's some testimony that you want to be able to break, to brace or to um, share with others. So, you know, don't look at circumstances as something negative. You know, when God closed one door, you know, they always say God will open another. If God released you off of a job, I'm just sharing, um, you know, my personal testimonies in these stories, but feel free to share, you know, put your situation down there your circumstances that although it appeared as a negative how it affected you and how it actually ended up being a blessing to you you know i left a house 
a job and everything to relocate to Dallas, Texas. This is where God told me to come. And in here, it felt like I lost everything. Matter of fact, when I came here, I came, I took a job that was paying, oh my God, one fourth less <laughs> the income that I was making when I was back in South Florida. However, it let me know that I had to lean and depend on God. So guess what? Again, a grateful heart. And in that, guess what? That job, I ended up getting fired. I'd never been fired off a job. Hey, hello. I was fired. But that <laughs> that actually opened doors to so many other things. And so it's just being in a place of gratitude that God is able to. To bless us. Like God wants to see how you're going to react. How are you going to react? Are you going to be angry? angry? Are you going to be ungrateful? Are you going to still say, God, I bless you. I bless you, Lord. I bless you through my circumstances. I bless you. Amen. Okay, so that is the power of gratitude. Now, practicing thankfulness daily. Now, this was pretty interesting. Because... This seems like a basic concept, right? It seems like it's something that's so easy. But I want to share with you, I actually signed up for a coaching class um, that was around manifestation. And so it talked about um, what are some of the things that you desire in your life? What are some of the things that you desire to achieve? What are some of your goals, whether it's in business, your personal life, um, your life spiritually? Like, so you write this thing out but in that you had to have a journal they taught us about having a journal and every day you would write down the things that you were grateful for so you list anywhere from uh, one to five or one to ten things that you're grateful grateful for so you start creating a atmosphere and the mindset of always being grateful for even the small things and the more that um, we begin to do gratitude, 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 it pushes away like the negative thoughts, the negative thinking. And it was powerful. So, you know, I'm like, I had to step outside of, I'm not even going to say like outside the word of God, but why did I have to go, you know, over to, I'm going to say, I don't even want to call it like worldly principles, but it's the same thing. That we're talking about when God says, write the vision, make it plain. You know, keep it in front of you every day. Affirmations. Do your affirmations. Do your declarations. Do those on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, you know, so that your mindset will stay on track with what God says in the word. Okay. So we talked about activation. So that was powerful. And that's why Faithful Moments uh, became the forefront of activating the word of God, because there's so many times like I cannot tell you, like I am 53 years old, like most people don't like to tell, tell their age, but literally um, 30 years of my life was like in a place of bondage because, you know, I was a believer, I was baptized, I followed scripture, I followed the word of God, I went to church, I did it like all those things, but somehow the word was not activated in my life like you know these were just like stories and when you know I had um, mentors other men and women of God to begin to share with me you know Shimon you got to stand on this word you got to remind God of, of his word you got to speak these things 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 and you know understanding the power of the blood of Jesus yeah they talk about the blood of Jesus but do they tell you like, you know, you have to like, there's one thing to, to read it and say the blood of Jesus, da, 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 da. but to like say that thing, like, you know, like the blood of Jesus wash away and cleanse my sins, like mean it, mean it and let it activate and penetrate deep down in your spirit, man. And I think that's the difference of, um, of coming from a place of, I'm going to say like reality versus um, just going through the motion. It's, it's just, we got to stop going through the motion and really put the word of God to action. 
So these, that was one of the things that I took away. So being thankful every day, writing the vision, get grab your journal. I know this doesn't sound like practical, but yes, grab your journal, write down the things that you're grateful for. God, I'm grateful for my, ho my house. I'm grateful, you know, that you have given me the wisdom, knowledge, understanding um, to un better understand your word. Father God, I thank you that I have had a revelation that life is spiritual. God, I thank you for, you know, the men and women of God that you placed in my life to mentor me. You know, it doesn't have to be all about material things because I don't want you to be, I don't want you to get lost on that. I want you to just focus on the simple things that you're grateful for in your heart and around your everyday living, you know, you're grateful for your kids. You think you're grateful for, you know, whatever it is, but begin to, you know, make it a habit of showing gratitude on a day-to-day -day basis. So for that, I wrote down two scriptures in Colossians, Colossians 3 and 17, 3 and 17, 3 and 17. Colossians 3 and 17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Amen. And the other scripture is Philippians 4 and 6. 4 and 6. 4 and 6. Do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation is, remember I'm reading from the New International um, Version. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. And so, remember how I said, like we'll read something in the Bible, but... You know, it's just we're reading through it and we're not really understanding and activating. The word petition was just like, okay, we just, you know, <laughs> we're, that means like we're making a plea to God. But I shared this. I'm just looking back here in my little library. I hope it's close over here so that I don't have to go to another side. It is not here. It is not up here. Okay. So I, I share how when my daughter was sick, um, I came across this book. I, I feel like the Holy Spirit led me to this book. And it was called, the title of the book was called Petitioning for the Impossible. And the author is Buddy Harrison. And in that book, that, that thing was powerful. Do you know... Uh, it actually taught you how to write out a petition. And so even in the midst of learning how to write out a petition, I, um, the Lord led me to the courts of heaven. So it, again, it's back to not just reading the Bible, but really utilizing what the word of God says and understanding it. And how do we um, make that practical in our life? So petition petition that was huge and and in that book um, buddy Harrison teaches you how to petition God um, for things that you desire and so he teaches you how to write it out how to connect scri um, scriptures with it so remember I told you God's word cannot return unto him void so um, I remember that my petition was God I Pray that you will heal my daughter's heart. That was a big one for me. I'm like, God, I petition you because my daughter had a heart condition. Um, her heart valve um, blood would pump out, but it would regurgitate back in. in um, so it, her heart wasn't uh, pumping fully. And she was a one-year-old child, but her heart was the size of an 80-year-old 80 80 woman, they said, right? It functioned like a, a heart of an 80 year old woman. And so my thing was, God, I'm praying that you will heal my daughter's heart. So I, I came across this book. I wrote out the petition. 
And I began to connect scriptures with what I was petitioning God for. And um, so, of course, my scriptures were around healing, um, the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And so this is what I'm talking about. One simple word, one simple word, and not understanding to the fullest the impact of it can truly um, change your life. So it says here, I'm going to read it one more time. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer, knowing how to pray and petition and with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So in the thanksgiving part, guess what you're thanking God already for what he has done for what you have petitioned him for. Amen. So, um, and for those that don't know the story, I petitioned God to heal my daughter's heart. I connected the scriptures with my petition. I prayed my petition. And guess what? God healed my daughter's heart and he gave me evidence that he healed her heart. Um, but she ended up passing away with pneumonia. It was not from the thing um, that was originally her illness. So petitioning God works. Being in a place of gratitude and thankfulness, guess what? It works. All right. So that is um, power, PowerPoint number two, practicing thankfulness daily. Number three, expressing thankfulness to others. Now, this one, that's a very good one. So we want to begin to emphasize the importance of expressing gratitude to those that are around us, um, those relationships. You know, I have um, Jessica here with me. I've never met Jessica in person. I met Jessica through her brother. Um, when I came to Texas, I um, ended up working for a bank. I was a loan officer. Her brother worked in underwriting. And because he knew um, that I was a believer, he said, hey, I want to connect you to my sister. She wrote this book. And, da, da, da. and let me tell you, Jessica is one of those people that God has placed in my life that is a destiny helper. And when I tell you this young lady was prophesying, um, prophesied in my life, getting me back on track. Like I was in a place where, you know, you, where I was stuck and God sent someone, um, to bless me. So Jessica, if I have not shared with you, I, I try to make this a practice all the time to tell people how grateful I am, um, that they're in my life for even those, the simplest thing, whatever, they've done whatever they've done whatever they have um spoken into my life i've shared my platform i shared my resources like um even coming <laughs> coming back home preparing for this live like i actually um began to my mind began to wander in a negative place and i don't know if i would call it negative but i was talking about in my brain how i give people access to my resources, um, to the people I know, to, um, like, I don't keep anything hidden. Like, if it worked for me, listen, I'll share it with you. Um, but sometimes, you know, people will abuse that. And guess what? They come to attach the, their self to you, to connect with you, to get your resources and get, then they walk away. And so I begin to uh, feel a certain way. But God, I thank you that you renew my heart and remind me that to continue to be grateful and to thank those people that have come and go and have gone because maybe, you know, it was just for a season. But I am thankful and I am grateful for the people that have impacted my life, um, whether it be in a big way, small way or whatever. But I definitely walk in a place of gratitude. So be thankful for others. And so I'm going to go to a scripture here, um, Ephesians 4 and 29, Ephesians 4 and 29, and I'm going to read that one really quick, Ephesians 4 and 29, 
four and twenty nine. Four and twenty nine. I'm almost there, you guys. Let me just one more page. Four and twenty nine. Okay, 4 and 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Hmm. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others and according to their needs. That it may benefit those who listen. So God, we thank you. We thank you for that word. So basically, God is saying, if you don't have anything nice to say, if it's not something that's going to build someone up, think about it first before we release it out of our mouth. Um, I'm going to read the next scripture that followed that. It says... Um, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, bawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Oh, that's powerful. That's powerful. Um, and I was sharing this with Prophet Courage. I was letting him know, you know, um, as God began to elevate you and, you know, teach you some things that are important and some things that are not releasing malice, um, the spirit of offense. That was a big one. I taught on the spirit of offense. And let me tell you, that thing really blessed me. Um, I talked about how me and my mom, you know, we were going back and forth, not, you know, out of our mouth, but we were holding some things inside. And so, um, God led me to the spirit of offense to study it. And when I came and released it to you guys, guess what? Um, that assignment was complete because it mended our relationship. And so, and I, and I say that because um, recently, because I want God to do a new thing in my life, I began to go back, even the people that um, may have offended me, like I may, may, may not have done anything to them, but I went back to even those people, the pastors, the, you know, people from my old church, my old community, you know, Whatever, if I have offended you to make you treat me the way that you treated me, guess what? I forgive you. And if if I've done anything, please forgive me. Whatever, you know, if I looked at you the wrong way, if I said the wrong thing, if I did the wrong thing, if I was out of protocol, if I was, you know, lack of knowledge, whatever the case may be, if I offended you in any way and it caused you to feel any negative or um, indifferent about me, please forgive me. And I forgive you because I want to be able to release them in my heart. Like, literally, I'm in a place now. Um, I don't want to say like nothing else matter, matters, but um, certain things just not important to me anymore. I was listening to the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. And he talked, he was talking about this is what, what you need to know about the spirit of poverty. He said, most people think that coming out of the spirit of coming out of a place of poverty is about money he said but that's not it. it don't focus on thinking that poverty is money guess what somebody can be um spiritually um poor but somebody can be you know their health their health could be a in a place can be an example of poverty so don't focus on thinking that money is the essence of poverty. You need to begin to think on Christ and understand that he will give you all that you need. And so that is that has been my my new um, way of thinking for a long time. And just when I hear it, 
it just brings me to a even deeper humbling place you know I have so many projects going on that I am so overwhelmed I'm gonna tell y'all and half of the the half of the things that God has given me as an assignment, I have no idea how to get it done. None, none. And I'm like, God, I need destiny helpers. I'm depending and relying on you. Like you need, you want me to take my resources, which are limited and spread it over all of these different projects. And I said, God, if you truly gave them to me, guess what? You'll fulfill it. You'll make it happen. You'll do this. You'll do that. And guess what? People began to sow. And I was like, God, I thank you. Look at that. Because I never asked people to sow into the ministry. I never asked people to sow into my life. And, um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be money. Like, you know, reach it out to say, hey, I can help you do this. Hey, I can help you do this that with this tv show i can help you do this with your jewelry i can help you do this with the success strategist institute so being in a place of gratitude and being thankful i am grateful if i haven't said that enough <laughs> i am grateful i'm even grateful i even cry sometimes when i just look at um the number of people that even come on here and watch the show look because i'm getting like emotional right now because it's not what you give to me, but it's how you support me. And nothing goes unnoticed. Nothing ever goes unnoticed. Like I see you when you don't even say anything. I see you uh, when you just sit a high. I see you when you see a like, and it doesn't go unnoticed. And I am grateful, I am grateful for all that you do so now woo, woo, woo. all right you guys listen you're not supposed to be over here crying right but I, I truly am I'm grateful I am grateful I'm even grateful for this opportunity to be on this platform amen Okay, y'all, live it a life of gratitude. And this is going to sum it up. This is going to sum it up. Live in a life of gratitude. Encouraging you all to embrace gratitude as a lifestyle and its transformation effect on other spiritual journey. Guess what? Remember, people are watching you. People are watching what you're doing. People are watching what, the, what you're saying. And always allow your life to be a place and a light that exemplifies gratitude. All right. Gratitude in the name of Jesus. Right. So I'm going to go to Psalms 34 and 1. Psalms 34 and 1. Psalms 34 and 1. Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Psalms 34 and 1. I will exalt the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glorify. I'm going to read to. I will glorify. I'm sorry. I will. Um. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. So Psalms 34, 1 says, I will. It says, I will extol. I will exalt, extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Amen. And then the second version, because uh, I'm sorry, verse I always want to give to is Ephesians 5 and Ephesians 5 and verse 20 chapter 5 verse 20 chapter 5 okay one more page over chapter 5 verse 20 chapter 5 verse 20 always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Father, Jesus Christ. 
So always give giving thanks. Amen. 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 So I want to wrap up and tell you guys thank you. Guess what? I might have to get up for a second if this. Okay. So he stopped. He stopped. Great. So I hope you guys have been blessed. I'm going to go back over these four nuggets real quick. The power of gratitude we talked about. Practicing thankfulness daily. Expressing thankfulness to others. Kindness and compassion. And living a life of gratitude. Living a life of gratitude. Amen. So I hope you all have been blessed. I want to thank you for joining us for another episode of Faithful Moments. And if you are interested in coming on and joining me anytime um, about a topic or um, something that the Lord has placed in your heart, guess what? Drop me a line, reach out to me, and let's do it. So I just want to pray with us. Uh, again, as we close out, we want to thank God for this month of November. We're going into the holiday season um, again with grateful hearts. I hope you all had an a awesome Thanksgiving. I had an awesome Thanksgiving. I drove 16 hours from Texas to Jacksonville just so that I can ensure that my grandkids can um, spend time and get to know my dad's family on a on a more personable le level and guess what it was amazing every portion of it was amazing so i am grateful i'm grateful for family and so and, I, and i'm also grateful for you all so father god i just thank you for this time of fellowship we thank you for each and every person that has taken the time out to come, Father God, upon this platform, Father God, to hear the word of God. Father God, we enter into your courts, Father God. First, Father God, again, repenting as always, repenting of our sins, both knowingly and unknowingly. Sins that we may have committed through our words, deeds, actions, Father God, even the sins of our forefathers on our mother's side and our father's side. God, we repent in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that your word has been edified father god i pray father god that you will continue to give us strategy wisdom knowledge and understanding father god i pray father god that you will continue to decrease us so that you may be increased that you may increase and be elevated and be glorified in our life father god you be glorified through these platforms you be glorified through our life you could be glorified through our ministry you be glorified through our assignment in jesus name we pray amen amen so you all have a blessed evening and i look forward to seeing you all again on next week bye bye